In this screencast, we'll take a look at how Solus appliances can solve the slow consumer problems that plague all other messaging systems. To start, I'll take a quick look at why most distributed applications that use messaging have slow consumers and why this makes slow consumer handling a key requirement for messaging platforms. Then I'll go over what impact slow consumers typically have on a messaging system and contrast that with a solo solution where we can get into how our solution makes use of patented technology to address the slow consumer issue. And then we'll get into a live demonstration of the Solus Appliance's excellent handling of slow consumers at really high message rates. What some people may not appreciate is that most distributed applications naturally have slow consumers. Many applications inherently have high rate sender, low rate receiver conditions, where during peak periods, a sending application will burst traffic at rates that exceed the ability of consumers to process these events. For capital markets, this may be the middle office applications. For an e-commerce website, it might be the logging application. For a wireless telecom provider, it is often consuming mobile usage data. For the distributed application to work, during bursts, the messaging system must act like a shock absorber, storing messages without loss and without affecting fast consumers or publishers. And it must allow slow consumers to catch up during relative dips in traffic so that overall the system can function correctly. The second type is an offline consumer due to a fault condition. The fault could be a network outage, a bug in the application itself, or even a host server failure. When a persistent messaging consumer fails, it instantly becomes a slow consumer to the messaging system. And again, what's key in this scenario is that the messaging system must allow the affected application to catch up and rejoin steady state without impacting other fast consumers or publishers. Now let's look at what effect a slow consumer can have on a typical message broker. If you're not using Solus as your message broker, this might give you insight into how your messaging system will behave in the face of slow consumers. Or maybe you've experienced exactly this behavior already. The chart illustrates message rate from the perspective of a message broker. At first, the system is in steady state, where all the publishers and subscribers are keeping up. Then a subscribing application encounters a fault. At first, the message broker may be able to keep up, but as the amount of messages and message state grows, the performance will eventually degrade. This forces the message broker to push back on the publishers, and delivery to fast consumers can become erratic. This means that the publishing application now have to deal with internal message accumulation and work around the poor performance of the message broker. If the failed application is brought online, it will further drain resources from the message broker, compounding the problem. However, not recovering the application causes its own problems. The operations team is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Often the system just keeps struggling to recover. This is really a tough problem for operations when the messaging system behaves in this way. So let's now look at how Solus behaves differently. In the face of failures, Solus appliances make use of patented technologies implemented in specialized hardware to allow it to overcome the shortcomings of file systems and disks to give applications the robust behavior they require. One aspect of this solution is that the Solus appliance dynamically identifies fast consumers and then prioritizes handling of events specifically to allow publishing applications and fast consumers to continue to remain unaffected in the presence of slow consumers. So in the face of a failed consumer, the publish rate remains steady and unaffected, and fast consumers continue to be fed their messages without impact, both of which are big improvements over software brokers. In the recovery phase is where the appliance's design and amazing performance allows it to unspool and deliver messages to recovered subscribers so they can catch up to the real-time flow at the maximum rate possible while not affecting existing publishers and fast consumers. This alleviates another key concern for the operations team. It's no longer a tough decision when to recover clients. Clients can recover and catch up at any time. Combining these behaviors means that recovery is possible and the Solus appliance allows the messaging application to return to steady state, all while providing a robust platform that isolates well-behaving applications from the fault or slow consumers. For the demo, I've got an HA pair of Solus appliances with publishers and subscribers spread evenly over several high-end servers. At the start, the publishers are sending messages to the consumers in a point-to-point -point model at an aggregate rate of 300,000 fully persistent messages per second input and output. Then we'll introduce a massive client failure where more than one-third of the clients go offline all at the same time, forcing the Solus appliance to spool messages for a large population of clients. 
Then after the appliance has spooled 25 gigs of traffic, I'll recover the failed consumers at the same time and investigate recovery. This is something that operations tries hard to avoid doing due to the overload that this typically creates on the system, but I'm not going to be gentle in this demo. And finally, you'll see that the system does recover and return to steady state under this stressful scenario. Okay, so what I've got here is SolidMin that's set up to manage the two appliances that we're going to use in this test. I've pre-configured this test as the test is already detailed enough and requires enough time to get through. So I'll just take a quick highlight. Redundancy is enabled and active, as you can see here. And I've pre-configured 20 endpoints to represent our clients. The streaming clients will remain online throughout the whole test, and the spooling clients will be the clients where we disconnect the subscribers, forcing spool accumulation during the test. So let's jump straight to this. I'm going to make extensive use of the time lapse to avoid spending too much time watching message spool accumulate. So here we've connected our streaming clients spread over a couple of different performance servers. And here's our clients that will eventually con disconnect as slow consumers. And you can see everybody's bound. And you can see everybody's connected. During the test, I'm going to use stats charting to monitor the appliance and highlight an individual client. So on the right here, I'm going to look at the appliance as a whole. And on the left here, I'm going to take a focus on an individual client. Okay, so we should start monitoring, start all these graphs. And then we'll start up the traffic. So here, I have uh, divided the publishers into blocks of 100,000 messages per second. And I did this because during the recovery, I want to do some investigation into different aspects of the Solus appliance and their handling of different burst rates. Let's take a look at these graphs. So to start with on the right, the system as a whole has gone from zero messages per second to 300,000 messages per second into the appliance and out of the appliance. And the green line represents the message spool accumulation on the appliance in bytes. Currently everybody's keeping up so there's very little message spool accumulation. On the left, I'm looking at two different queues. Queues are an excellent proxy for clients in this test because this is where all the messages accumulate when the clients are offline, if they are ever offline. So we will look at two queues, the spool queue, where we will eventually take this client offline, and the streaming queue, which is the clients that will stay on online throughout the duration of the test. For now, both clients are receiving messages at 15,000 messages per second and are keeping up. 15,000 messages per second, uh, over 20 clients, and 300,000 messages per second ingress. So that's the expected rate. So here, down here, you can see we're monitoring the current spool usage in megabytes. And again, the colors match to match the queues. So you can follow the two graphs. Let's just flip over to Solomon. And if we refresh the queues, you can see everybody is keeping up. OK, excellent. So now let's just take some clients offline. Now you can immediately see some of the clients that are offline are starting to accumulate message spool. And you can start to see that these messages are being accumulated in the spool. And the red, which represents our offline consumer, has now dropped from 15,000 messages per second down to zero. The system is still accepting messages at 300,000 messages per second input into the Solus appliances. There are still two thirds of the clients are online. So the output rate of the Solus appliance is 200,000 messages per second. But the appliance is now accumulating messages for the offline clients. And you can see this from the green line here that's plotting the spool usage. So now we'll let this ta test go in time lapse. And we'll rejoin it when we've got close to 25 gigs of message spool. OK, so now we're just getting up to close to 25 gigs here of messages spooled. And you can see that throughout the duration of this test, the input to the Solus appliance has been steady at 300,000 messages per second, and the output from the Solus appliance to the fast consumers that are still online has been steady throughout the test. And if we look at an individual fast consumer, that's also true here. No impact to this consumer. And the messages have continued to spool for the offline consumer, and the spool has never increased for the online consumer. If we flip over to SolidMin, you can see the online consumers here have kept up. And the offline consumers now have spooled close to 4 gigs each. So now let's bring back online 
all of our subscribers all at once and force the system to deal with the uh, unspooling to all of these clients. We've got all of the clients now reconnected and you can see that the message rate of the appliance that, that is capable of outputting immediately jumps up above the ingress rate as the appliance is able to allow these clients to catch up. And if you look over here at the individual client's case, you can see that it goes from zero when it was offline to now unspooling between 20 and 25,000 messages per second as it begins to catch up. You can see its message spool is starting to taper off as well. And that's also present in the green line here. Let's let some time pass and then we can rejoin this test and uh, do some more investigation of input rate. Okay, so I've let this run and you can see by looking at this graph that the spool continues to recover and that these clients are going to recover w as we let time pass. But What I want to now do is modulate the input rate to the Solus appliance and see how this affects the unspool rate because rarely do, do applications run at a steady state like this. So if we check a few different input rates then you can really get a better feel for the performance of the Solus appliance. So let's take one of our publisher groups offline and you can see that the appliance will dip down to 200,000 messages per second input rate and we can watch and the appliance will now now that there is less messages being spooled the rate has decreased the unspool rate can increase in proportion so that the subscribers can catch up faster and the online consumers remain online just at a lower rate see and you can see that in Solidmin so let's let some time pass. Okay, so let's now take another group of the publishers offline and see what effect that has. So now we'll drop down to 100,000 and you can see that there's going to be another corresponding jump up in the unspool rate. Now we're actually unspooling from the appliance at close to 250,000 messages per second right from the spool while maintaining another 100,000 messages per second input rate. So this is really quite uh, awesome performance for persistent messaging. And again, we'll let some time pass here. Now let's rejoin. And you can see as the input rate decreases, the advantage that the appliance can take for allowing the, the catching up subscribers to really catch up, we're now at 400,000 messages per second. And now if we cut the input rate right down to zero, We'll watch this and you can see that now we're actually unspooling this client at 60,000 messages per second and we're doing that across all of the clients that are catching up. So you can see they are all catching up now. And now we're at close to 430,000 messages per second being unspooled from the disk. Now let's flip the test around and actually instead of removing publishers let's add back in all these publishers and add in a fur further 150,000 messages per second bringing the total up to 450,000 so let's actually burst the system up closer to the peak rate that the appliances can handle and you'll see actually that the system immediately jumps right back up handling that no problem and the online consumers stay online and we can see that even more easily with the statistics these online fast consumers are staying right caught up and what the system does is under the pressure of this message burst it reduces the unspool rate for these consumers because the now the messages that it needs to spool have increased matching the, the input rate and correspondingly the output rate has to decrease in order to not affect the input publishers and fast consumers. So now let's just return to our steady state test and allow this state, the recovery state, to finish and then we can rejoin for the post recovery. Okay and we're now just about at the point of recovery and you can see here that we're just about to finish unspooling and then the message rates will drop back and we'll hit steady state. But I think it's good to recap. The point of all of this modulation of the input rate was to show you that under a variety of different input rates, the Solus appliance performance is rock solid as it's recovering clients. Online fast consumers are never affected. They always stay up. And the publishers are never back pressured when they are sending messages to the appliance. So here we go. Now we hit steady state and now all the clients are caught up and we've fully recovered from that one-third outage where one-third of our clients went offline and forced 25 gigs of spool. Now let's summarize what I just showed you. 
The chart shows the same scenario without the rate modulation during recovery. You can clearly see the desired slow consumer handling behavior. Publishers and fast consumers are not affected by slow or offline consumers, and it's possible to recover offline consumers and have them catch up without impact to the other clients in the system. This is exactly what you'd want from your messaging system. Thank you for watching this video. You can find out more information about the Solus Messaging Appliance through this link. And you might want to check out our other screencast for more on Solus's guaranteed messaging performance.